So, uh, some bit of time ago, somebody posted like about Arkin Fox, and Arkin Fox is an interesting project. It's basically just a user JS for Firefox, which I think most a good number of Firefox forks follow. So like LibreWolf, I'm pretty sure for the most part is a user JS. And then FireDragon from there is basically user JS, except they distribute their own binaries. Um, ArkinFox does not say you should use ArkinFox because ArkinFox. The people behind it say like, yeah, ArkinFox is good for a certain use case, but you should use something else for if depending on your use case. And so they've got a guide on like whether how to decide and setting it up if you decide to. So goes into Arc and Fox as a resource. Feel free to use any use any, all, or none of it. Just heed the warnings, notes, and documentation. So this is what we're kind of like looking at is the documentation for Arc and Fox, the user JS. And kind of like the ideas behind it. If your threat model calls for anonymity and advanced fingerprinting, pr fingerprinting protection, use Tor Browser. You can also use Tor Browser for everyday browsing as another secondary browser. However, you're going to want a non-Tor Browser browser too, which is Firefox. So carry on reading. So the only thing they're pushing is Firefox. And I mean, makes sense. For most people, this is all you really need. Tech lore video. In the before times, mankind suffered. We meaning, before we had all these cool extensions and privacy enhancing tools at our fingertips, people just suffered with the way the web was and how it could track them. But nowadays, together with a few ex select few extensions, you will get the most of, most of the privacy possible with Firefox is built-in solutions such as HTTPS only mode, state, state partitioning, network partitioning, total cookie protection, enhanced cookie clearing, site isolation, CR light, and many more. So these are all things that come in Firefox that you can set up, disable, enable, and for a good bit of it, like don't quite come in some of the other browsers, especially I guess the Chrome-based ones don't have some of these features. Some of these solutions are the default or will be. Others are easily changed. Settings, privacy and security, enhanced tracking protection, strict. Cookies and site data, delete cookies and site data when Firefox closes. You can add exceptions. HTTPS only mode enables HTTPS only mode in all windows. So these are all settings that can be set from the get-go. I have a default like... Firefox here set up. I usually use Fire Dragon for a lot of things, but I've got Firefox here for other reasons. But that's a possibility. So we can go into settings. And what was it? Privacy and security. We could set it to strict. Um, I mean, I'm not. Let's see. Social media blocks social media sites and well, cross-site cookies, tracking content, crypto miners, fingerprinters. Standard seems to do that, but it's stricter. Per so may cause sites to break. Let's see. We've also got cookies and site data. can delete cookies when Firefox closes, and then go to HTTPS only mode. And what HTTPS only mode should allow you to do is it will force HTTPS over every connection so that it's always encrypted. So yeah, if you, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not going to go into it like detail. That's it encrypts things. <laughs> you can look on the internet for how HTTPS works and how what it uses to encrypt it. Now you can start enjoying some of the Tor level protection Arkinfox has enjoyed since Firefox 52. After that, the benefits get incrementally smaller, but they do add up. Your mileage will vary depending on your needs. Each Arc and Fox release generally sees the number of prefs flipped decrease. And we've been doing this since 
the before times. We hope that Ark and Fox will one day become obsolete. So this is really talking about the fact that Firefox's defaults um, have slowly been getting to the point to where they're becoming more Ark and Fox. <clears throat> and that's kind of their hope, is that you don't have to apply this user JS to apply all these settings. You can do it like individually and only have to flip like one or two things. And that's about it. So fingerprinting. Most of the above details deals with state and other cross-origin linkability mechanisms such as navigational tracking. Stateless tracking or fingerprinting is a, stateless tracking or fingerprinting is a little bit more complex. If your threat model calls for anonymity and advanced fingerprinting protection, then use Tor Browser. Otherwise, you can read more about it later in the wiki where Ark and Fox helps mitigate it, but you have options, so you can set your own settings and things like that. It'll explain it. If you're going to use Arkin Fox's user.js, then don't expect to just start using it as is. You'll need to create overrides and fully read this wiki. <clears throat> how a user.js works to know how to apply Arkin Fox, read the rest of the wiki. Press or settings or controlled Firefox's behavior. Some can be set from settings, then all can be in about config, except for what are called hidden preferences, which only show when they are set by the user. User.js file is a JavaScript file. It's text-based and resides in the root directory of a profile and is used to set preferences for that profile when Firefox starts. So let's see. Let me see if I can remember. I believe profile, my friend. Most browsers let you have different profiles. So yeah, you could have an Arkin Fox profile and then a Normie profile or like other stuff, I pretty much. Use it to set preferences for that profile when Firefox starts. You can update user.js while Firefox is open. It is only ever read when Firefox starts. Prefs must follow Mozilla's syntax, which is user pref, pref name value, pref. Name must be wrapped in quotation marks. String values must be wrapped in quotes. Press are case sensitive. And a semicolon is required at the end, of course, because it's JavaScript. So here's an example. You accept that, 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 and then comments, so on. Firefox starts. It reads the active press and user JS in order and then writes them to press.js. It ignores inactive press. The, it does not reset them. If a pref already exists in Press.js, it overwrites it. If it's listed twice, the last one apply, will be applied last. So basically, it'll apply the first one, and then as it goes down in order, it'll apply the next one. That's basically what it is. It may abort parsing the file if it encounters a syntax error. If will not abort if you apply a type mismatch. It will actually write that type mismatch into Press.js, and Firefox will ignore it, because there's no such preference. User.js is now ignored until the next time Firefox starts. So it's got everything loaded up. Firefox opens, contents of Press.js are used and shown as modified in about config. If a pref in Press.js has a tennis match, it's ignored. About config, all values stored in Press.js, even if they are the default value, will be denoted as modified. If you set a value to a modified value, it is stored in Press.js. If you reset a value to default, it is removed from Press.js. If you reset a hidden pref to default, the value will be blank, and assuming it is not applied again from user.js, it will then vanish on the next about config reload. Always backup, even if you don't use Arc and Fox. The easiest and complete way to backup is to copy your entire profile directory when Firefox is closed. Just backing up Press.js is not enough and not recommended by this wiki. To find your profile directory, go to About Support, and about the 10th item listed is the Profile Folder with an Open Folder button. When copying your profile directory, make sure Firefox is closed, rename your copied folder to something meaningful, and keep the original name for an easy rollback. For example, if the profile folder is called that, a backup copy might be called this.backup, or 
dash pre Arkin Fox user JS. Be aware that this is your entire profile, so rolling back will not keep any new cookies and passwords, bookmarks, extensions, and pages, and the like. Pref.js is a runtime file that includes more than just your pref changes and back. Up Press.js does not cover all the things a user JS can alter. So if we go, what was it? About support. So the profile we are looking for is here. We can. Ha! <laughs> Stupid. Let's do it this way. See preferences all right here. So we've actually got a couple going on right now. So there's that and then there's this one. So we could back this one up and it would have everything that we have currently set right here. So if we go up one, we've also got Ice Cat, so it's there. Extensions, system extensions. So if we go back in here, so we can see our extensions in here, we've got Dark Reader and uBlock, which is the feature complete uBlock for sure. But that's the folder that they're talking about. Next, overrides. Everyone will need some overrides in user.js. Directly modifying Arkenfox's contents is not recommended. Arkenfox flips 1.110 up uh, versions 1.10 up press. With that, you'll get some inconvenience and breakage. Everybody's mileage and threat model will differ. Everyone will need some overrides. You do this by keeping them in a separate user overrides JS file in your profile folder. So updating doesn't wipe them, but instead appends them when you run the updater. Remember how user JS applies prefs in order they are written, so if a pref was listed a second time, then the second value, yours, would override the first, Arkenfoxes. So you've got Arkenfoxes is J. Oh, that pref, and then you create your own override, and then it does that to change something. The updater gets the current live Arkenfox and appends your overrides, and then it compares that to the current user JS in your profile. If it's different, it replaces it. In this example, Firefox will apply the value of green when Firefox is started. Yours after update runs, so you can do that, and then get green because it overrides it. So, that's the overrides. I think I'm going to cut it here, and then we'll go into the next one later on. So, this will be split into a few videos. If you enjoyed the video, then like, comment, subscribe, feed the algorithm, boost the video up, share this video with your friends. If you found it informative or you just want to chat i've got plenty of places in the description discord gilded and what have you check those out and i will see you guys in the next one